Hey everybody, the Johnny Cage here, doing something a little different today. I'm actually going to start doing some uh, movie reviews, I decided, because I talk about them so much in my Let's Plays, I just decided I'm just going to do full-on reviews, because I really love, I love movies. I love movies as much as I love video games, at least, you know, retro video games, and, you know. And how appropriate that my first review be on the movie Wreck-It Ralph, which I just saw like an hour ago. And I uh, just figured I'd give you my thoughts on it. I'm on the IMDb page looking up stuff as references because, you know, I've never actually done a real review on something before. But um, it's got an 8.4 already, which already puts it in the running for the top 250 movies of all time, which is, you know, that's that's quite an accomplishment already right there. Um, the characters in it, we got uh, John C. Riley, who you probably know best from, like, Step uh, Step Brothers and, like, Talladega Nights um, and Walk Hard, you know, stuff with uh, Will Ferrell in it. Um, you also have Sarah Silverman, which we'll get to in a second. If you know who she is, then you know who she is. And if you don't, it's kind of hard to explain. I don't know if there's anything that I could say that would remind you of, like, other stuff she's been in. But she's just in a lot of little things here and there. So, anyhow. Uh, you also have Jane Lynch as this, like, tough as nails army chick, which is great. You probably know Jane Lynch best now from the show Glee, where she plays the, uh, I don't even know. I've never actually seen an episode of Glee, but I think she's a gym teacher that hates everybody, which is perfect, because that's pretty much who she plays in this. Um, and then you have uh, Fix-It Felix, who is voiced by Jack McBrayer, who uh, was the guy... He's on 30 Rock right now. He was also the guy in Forgetting Sarah Marshall that was having trouble having sex with his wife and was always asking Russell Brand for advice, if you remember that guy. But anyhow, that's all I could really think of for, for that guy. Anyhow, so on with the movie itself. So it's about... It's about uh, Wreck-It Ralph, and he's a bad guy in an old-school video game. Uh, you know, a game very much of the liking that you'd see in an arcade in, like, the 80s. And he just, like, the way that the game works, and they have real councils of this. They have real cabinets of this game. I should say councils, but real cabinets of this game um, that they produced for to, uh, to you know, advertise for the movie, which is really cool. I never got a chance to play one. Um, I think you can play it online. Maybe I'll give that a shot later on tonight. But, um... So anyhow, he breaks down this building, and then you play as fi uh, Fix-It Felix, and you have to fix the building. You fix the building, um, you, you Fix-It Felix gets a medal, and all the people that live in the building uh, pick up Ralph and throw him off the top of the building, and it, hilarity, you know, good stuff. So anyhow, after that, then then the, the movie really picks up. It goes into, you know, CGI, and, you know, it's got Fix-It Felix, who, who lives in a dump, by the way, literally a dump. Um... Just, like, full of, full of bricks from all the buildings that have been destroyed with all the demolishing he's done. And uh, he's just not happy with uh, how his life is. He wants to be the hero for once, you know, and who can blame him? And so I think pretty cl pretty soon after that, you see him in the scene where, if you've seen a trailer to this movie, you know it already, where he's sitting in kind of like an... It's not an AA meeting, but I just want to call it that because I can't think of anything better to, you know call it it's just it's a it's a help group i suppose i don't know with him and then you've got everyone else around him that's uh that are you know um villains from other awesome video games you've got uh m bison uh, dr robotnik bowser um who else you got the zombie from the first house of the dead game uh kano from mortal Kombat. um a guy that they refer to as satan which is kind of weird because this is a disney movie and they refer to him as satan but, well, then he actually corrects him and says, it's Satin. But, honestly, I think it's supposed to be um, uh, Diablo from the very first Diablo game. Either that, or it looks like Satan from uh, the movie Legend, quite frankly. I mean, I don't know why they would just say, oh, that's Satan. But, yeah, I, I guess you could see where that would be Satan at the same time. Um, but, anyhow, in the first, like, probably quarter of this movie, they do a great job with just, just throwing in little references to... Uh, to, to games, and um, the way that this works is, at the end of every night in this arcade, all the games close down, and they go to the this hub, kind of like in uh, Monsters, Inc., where they, you know, they'll go come back from scaring the kids, and they'll come back to the central hub location, and uh, you can go, they can go around to other people's games, um, they're, I guess they're just, like, allowed to, but um, if you, you're in the game, and you die there, then you're, you're dead for good. So, as where if you're playing your own game and you die, you obviously come back to life. So, anyhow, um, there's lots of cool stuff in the beginning. When it starts off, <clears throat> you see the uh, the arcade closed down for the night, and um, it goes over, the screen pans over to a Street Fighter 2 arcade game, and you've got Ken and Ryu facing each other, and then Ryu's like, how about we meet up for some drinks over at Tapper's? You know, and it's like, awesome. And Tapper's uh, another old-school arcade game, if you're not familiar with it. But, um... Uh, 
So yeah, you, you see stuff later on, like later on, Wreck-It Ralph and this this whole like you know kind of depression is there. This 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 bar and Ryu is in the background and. Uh, Anyhow, he's looking for a medal, because Fix-It Felix always gets these medals, and he thinks if he has a medal, that will make him a good guy. Um, and he asks the, the Tapper guy if he's ever see, seen a medal, and he's like, you can check the Lost and Found. So he goes in this back room and checks the Lost and Found. And there's a box with some stuff in it. Uh, one of them, I remember, is the exclamation point from Metal Gear Solid. So when he takes it out, it makes that you know high-pitched noise of when uh, Snake gets, uh, gets found. I thought that was a great reference, great throwback right there. Um, anyhow, so as he's leaving Tappers, he runs into this guy that, uh, can't stand his job either, and he's from this game called Duty Calls, or, um, no, not Duty, Hero's Duty, Hero's Duty is the name of it, and, uh, he's just, like, he's kind of drunk, which is great, too, you know, Disney, drunk guy in there, uh, but the game is kind of like, um, Gears of War, and he's like, oh, there's so many bugs, bugs constantly, you know, every time a kid puts a quarter in, it's so terrifying, and, uh, so this guy kind of, uh, um, he gets knocked out somehow. I forget exactly what happens. Oh, oh, because he sees a cockroach on, on Ralph's, like, shoulder and freaks out and runs into a wall. Ralph grabs his gear, puts it on, goes into the game, and, um, you know, that's when you meet Jane Lynch's character, who's this hard-ass, uh, you know, crazy army chick who doesn't take any crap from anybody, and, um... You know, he goes through, like, a round of it, and he just, it just, hilarity ensues, because all these bugs are trying to attack him, he doesn't know what to do, he's so scared. He's like, this game is so violent and terrifying, you know, uh, compared to, you know, his game from the 80s. Um, but, so, after that, um, some, some other stuff happens, I'm obviously not gonna have time, or, you know, the memory to recall everything that happened, but he ends up, they, they tell him, the reason he went here is because the guy, the drunk guy at Tappers, tells him that you can get a medal if you get up to the top of this tower. So while no one's playing the game, while the arcade is open, he takes it upon himself to go up to this tower, and uh, you know, no one's playing the game, so he's not getting attacked by anything. He goes into the tower, he gets a medal, <clears throat> he's trying to escape, he gets into a, an escape pod, which... Um, goes all over the place. Oh, and one of these, one of those bugs, um, even though the game's not being played at the time, gets in the escape pod with him, so keep that in mind. But anyhow, he goes into the escape pod, um, doesn't know how to control it, goes back to the, to the hub, where, where it's bouncing off the walls, it goes into another game called Sugar Dash, and sadly, this is where it kind of takes a turn for the not-so-awesome, because the rest of the movie is pretty much played out in this game called Sugar Rush, which is uh, more or less, you know, like a, a Mario Kart racing game, uh, only it's candy themed, so everything's all candy, Mountain Charlie kind of thing, but uh, anyhow, so he, he crash lands, um, this bug escapes, he thinks it's dead, but it's not, and that's uh, important for the plot later on. Um, he comes across this, he loses his medal, and as he's trying to find it, he runs into this girl named Penelope Von uh, Schnizzlebach, or I, I'm not making it up, I don't even know. It doesn't even say on the IMDb, IMDb page her, her last name, but she's trying to get into this race um, that's run by, uh, is his name King Candy? Yeah, King Candy. Uh, oh, voiced by Alan Tudyk, by the way, who was Wash and Firefly, just a little funny thing. Um, but she's trying to get into this race, and there are 16 racers, and the top nine are the people that get to be chosen um, as racers for the next day that the arcade opens. And so, <clears throat> you know, obviously she really wants to be there. The problem with her is that she's a glitch. Something's wrong with her coding. And uh, so it, <clears throat> she doesn't play right, I guess. She's kind of like an outcast in that sense, too. Um, and what you find is that, you know, Ralph and her, they start to form a bond. But this is where, stopping the story for a second, this chick voiced by Sarah Silverman, really annoying, not likable very much. I wouldn't say at all, but but not very much. I mean, I just don't know. It doesn't seem so fitting for her character, and I, I mean, as far as animated movies like this are concerned, which I have not seen a lot of, the only animated movie that I've ever seen like this um, is Wally. -E. The only one I've seen all the way through, at least, is Wally. -E. Um, and this, I would say Wally -E was better than this overall, although I love the retro characters and all, but, you know, that's just, you know, that's just wishful thinking, hoping that they're going to be in the movie you know, a whole lot, but there are some pretty funny references every now and again, so you got to take it for what it's worth. Anyhow, so getting back to it, oh, my neighbors are home. Um, they uh, arrive at this, this candy place, and they start having to, uh, they kind of like break into this factory and build her a go-kart, 
and you find out that the evil king has been behind her being a glitch all along that she's actually was supposed to be in the game but um oh the but but the king candy um knows this code to get into this room where he can play around with the coding of the game and the code to get into that room is the konami code which is great um but he cut off like all the characters memories and all of her data um, because she was supposed to be like, the princess of that land, and he took it over. And the king, oh, here's major spoilers, not that I haven't given you a lot, a bunch of already, but the king is from a game that was previously in the arcade, a racing game, and he's just like this this bitter um, game from like another like 80s like racing game, and he just t changed the coding so he didn't look like himself there, but you figure out that it's him, and so he's actually the bad guy. Um... And so she's trying to win this race, and at the same time, uh, the crazy marine girl is in this candy land trying to uh, destroy the parasite that she knows is there. And Fix It Felix came along because um, their game, the Fix It, uh, the Fix It Felix game, is currently out of order because Ralph is not there. So there's a big out of order sign on there, and everyone in the game is worried that the game is going to get you know thrown out of the arcade because it's not working properly because Ralph's not there. Um, but anyhow, so at the end, she's doing the race, and these, uh, parasites start just, you know, destroying everything, um, but, you know, there, there's more I could say about it, but it's really not necessary. They, they create a big beacon by dumping a bunch of Mentos into a lake of Diet Cola, and this beacon, like, um, you know, like those those lights that mosquitoes go to and then they, they pop because they're attracted to it and it kills them. Same thing applies there. So they kill all these parasites. Ralph beats up the uh, the King Candy, who's actually this other weird racing dude. And, uh, you know, everything, everything works out. And that's pretty much the story right there. So, there you go. <laughs> is it worth the money? Yeah, I give it. A, I give it a decent recommendation. I'd say this is probably like a seven point five out of ten. It would probably be like an eight if it, the movie would have been uh, a little bit more on what happens in the first quarter of it. Because there's just so many funny video game references, and I, I just like it more. I like it more than him going to help out this this girl. And by the way, this girl Sarah Silverman's character who was doing this whole cart racing thing, she more or less becomes the main character in this movie. I would say overall, she's more of the main character than Racket Ralph is. Um, and I don't think that's a, a very good move at all, but, you know, that's the way they're going to take it, and, uh, ultimately in the end, though, it had a good moral to it, so I can't, you know, crap all over this movie, certainly. It was worth a watch, but I'm not going to say it was, uh, one of the best movies that I've seen all summer, or, well, it's past summer now, it's not one of the better movies I've seen this year, but still, uh, pretty cool, and if you're into retro games, you'll like, you'll like the little stuff. If you have kids, you know, take your kids to see it, because they'll love it, and then you'll pick up on these little things that, you know, were from your era of gaming, because, you know, I know I was in there, and I was probably the only one laughing at some of these little jokes that people didn't get, like, there's a part, um, early in the beginning when they're that help, help group, and the, uh, zombie from House of the Dead is saying something, and uh, Kano from Mortal Kombat just, like, reaches into his chest and pulls out his heart. You know, his, like, old-school fatality from uh, Mortal Kombat. It's just like, it's what's in your heart that really matters. And it's, like, awesome fatality in a Disney movie. Gotta love it. But pretty good movie overall. So uh, that's that's my uh, review of Wreck-It Ralph. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to go see everything permitting. I'm going to go see The Man with the Iron Fists, which looks interesting and mindlessly entertaining. So that should be lots of fun, and I plan on doing a review on that movie as well. So uh, thanks a lot for listening, everyone. Um, if you have any questions, comments, um, anything about the movie that I forgot that you think should be mentioned, please leave it in the comments below. I, I really would love to hear what you have to say about this movie as well. Um, anyhow, guys, it's been the Johnny Cage. Please uh, subscribe, comment, and like. I guess that same outro applies here. Sure. Anyhow, uh, thanks a lot, guys, for listening. This has been the Johnny Cage, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.